how are you doing? It's Doomver and the Dingo. I'm back. I got the book. I actually didn't go anywhere, so that makes it easy for me. I can say I'm back and I didn't didn't do shit. I'm still sitting here. Sitting in the middle of a trail on a pat on uh public lands and there's mushrooms right there that I'm just itching. I'm itching to show you guys those things. But I have to read this book. I have to read this shit to you. I have to educate you. I, I can't just run over there and pick them and put them in my basket and then, then say, hey, look, here's a whatever. No, we're learning. We're learning. We're learning together. So here we go. This is how mushrooms reproduce and grow. All mushrooms produce millions of spores, microscopic reproductive units that are dispersed in various ways. Spores that germinate. I'm sorry, I'm going to have to kill this fly. All right, sorry. Uh, they that are dispersed in various ways. Spores that germinate, 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 develop into hypha, hyphae, h y p h a e singular hypha thread-like strands that are collectively known as mycelium, plural mycelia. Each hyphal cell has one nucleus. If two genetically comparable mycelia come in contact, they join to form a mycelium containing cells with two nuclei. This mycelium with two nuclei per cell is the vegetated portion, vegetative portion of the fungus. It takes... It takes in nourishment from various types of organic matter, giving the, given the right conditions. Not yet completely understood, the vegetative mycelium begins to develop small knots of hyphal tissue, which grow to become mature, immature fruiting bodies. These, let's see. These expand and form and mature into mature mushrooms. Spores are dispersed and the life cycle begins again. The uh, uh, Asomycetes produce spores in sac-like containers that are typically sausage-shaped. That are typically sausage-shaped. These are known as acai. Singular as. Ascus, ascus, asci, and ascus, I believe is how you say that, or asci, it's uh, A-S-C-I. Most asci contain eight spores, which are usually dispersed through an opening in the tip of the ascus. The asci line that exposed the surface of cup fungi, the pits and grooves of morels, and in the pits and grooves of morels. In the flask fungi, the acai line, the inside of the line, the inside of minute, the inside of minute, I don't understand that, inside of minute, flask-shaped vessels known as, or inside of minute, okay, I gotcha, inside of minute flask-shaped vessels known as para- Thesia. In truffles, the acai develop in the interior of the mushroom, and the spores are dispersed when the mushroom decays, or when, oops, sorry, let's turn the page, or when animals eat it and spread the spores in their droppings. Many asomycetes can reproduce asexually, forming spores independent of acai. The basidio, the basidiomycetes produce their spores in short appendages known as sterigmata that project out of the microscopic structures known as basidia, or singular basidium. The basidia are typically club-shaped. The class of hymenomycetes, the basidia line fertile surfaces of the mushrooms and the spores are actively discharged. 
in chanterelles, the basidia line mushroom, mushrooms underside. Or wait, what does that say? The basidia line, the fertile surfaces of the mushrooms and the spores are actively discharged. In chanterelles, basidia, basidia line, the mushrooms underside. Underside. The tooth fungi, they occur on the teeth. The pore fungi in the tubes and in the gilled mushrooms and the gills. The gastro, gaster, gastromycetes, the spores are not shelf, not self propelled. In the bird's nest fungi, they are dispersed, rain, dispersed as raindrops stripe the eggs and puffballs. They are shot or puffed through apical openings in the mushroom on stink horns the spores adhere to the legs of insects attached attracted to the foul smelling slime slime molds can reproduce sexually or asexually sexual reproduction takes place through the production of spores which are either exposed on hair like stalks or enclosed in spore cases Asexual reproduction can occur if the plasmodium splits apart. Plasmodium, that's a pretty fucking sweet word. Um, you know, don't be letting your plasmodium split, yo. <laughs> anyway, back. When to hunt mushrooms? Most mushrooms can be found for only a limited time, usually in either spring or fall. Some are present in the spring. They often disappear during the hot, dry summer months the, and reappear in the fall when the fungi are most abundant. In the, northwest, in, the, in the northeast and midwest, the mushroom season begins in late April and continues until hard frost in the fall. Because the, south, because the southeast warms up earlier and stays warm longer, its season is correspondingly longer. And on Gulf Coast mushrooms, on the Gulf Coast, mushrooms often fruit abundantly during the winter. In the Northern Rockies, mushrooms usually come up in spring and fall. In the in the Southern Colorado Rockies, the best time to collect fungi are July and August, the warmest and wettest months. The Pacific Northwest has a short spring mushroom season, a long dry summer when few mushrooms are present and then it rains then, if the rains come in time and the frost is late, a long fall mushroom season. In Southern California and the Southwest mushroom and the Southwest mushrooms occur during the rainy winter and spring, tapering off as it becomes warmer and drier. Ah, oh, you motherfuckers are troopers if you stick through this with me. Oh my god. Holy shit. I hate this for you guys. Alright, collecting mushrooms. That's what we want to do. Collect mushrooms in a flat bottom basket. Take along take along a roll of wax paper and wrap each species you find. Do not use plastic wrap since it hastens decay. This will keep species separate and fresh. I usually just bring this little basket with me. I put them in there. But, you know, wax paper if you're going to do it properly. Bring down, bring around note cards, ugh, bring note cards with you and jot down pertinent data. In particular, note the habitat of the mushrooms, including what type of tree it is growing on, near, whether it is growing singly, scattered in groups or in clusters. Any distinctive odor or taste, the color of the cap, stalk, gills, spores, the pores, or teeth, which may change after a mushroom is picked. Note any color that changes when it is bruised. You can also You can also use the note cards to set up spore prints in the field. 
they will often be ready by the time you return home. If you are absolutely certain of the identification of an edible species, you can clean, clean it in the field. Until you are experienced, however, it is best to take the mushrooms home intact. St the stalk base is often crucial for identification feature. And cleaning and can and cleaning, pardon me, can remove diagnostic characteristics. The more characteristics you can observe, the better chance you have of identifying the mushroom correctly. If not if it helps to have fresh mushrooms rather than old ones to collect many specimens of one kind in various stages of growth how to make a spore print which we will do a spore print is essential for accurate identification of any of, of many mushrooms to to make one cut off the mushrooms stalk close at the base, or yeah, cut off the mushroom stalk close to the base. Place the cap with the gills or pores facing down on the piece of white paper. If you are in the field, enclose the cap and paper in wax paper and place them on the bottom of the basket. At home, cover them with a glass. Sometimes the spores fall more readily if you place a drop of water on the cap before you cover it. Some mushrooms produce spore prints in a few hours. Other takes much longer, sometimes overnight. Okay. So, yeah, we'll, I'll be doing that. We'll, we'll make a spore print, and I'll show you how to do that. But I will take it home. I'm not going to be doing it in the field because uh, I got better shit to do. So, how to, because mushrooms are... Because mushrooms are so varied and abundant, and their their identification may be may at first seem very difficult. This guide enables you. This guide enables you to compare the mushrooms you encounter with color photographs of living mushrooms on their natural habitats. You can more easily find the, you can or more easily find the mushroom you have seen because the photographs are arranged by shape, color, distinct, distinguishing certain groups of lookalikes such as LBMs, little brown mushrooms, may require microscopic examination and chemical analysis and can confound even an expert. Identifying even the genus of these mushrooms is a good accomplishment. After you have located the picture of the species most like your specimen, check the field characteristics listed in the text description and the spore print color. Also check the lookalikes section to eliminate each to eliminate each item by item. If you plan to eat the mushroom you have found, make sure that the edibility section and the comments describe it describe them as safe if you are absolutely sure of your identification refer to the ex refer to the section on cooking mushrooms in the appendices of this guide for the general safeguards for recipes mushroom hunters who have microscopes can gain extra assurance that their identification is correct if they examine the spores microscopically in short before you eat any mushroom check every possible source of error if any doubt remains about the edibility of the species do not eat it i endorse that message i will re i will repeat it in short before you eat any mushroom check every possible source of error if any doubt remains about the edibility of the species do not eat it so there is your warning. There is the, that's very important to know. Always, it's very exciting to find them. Like I said, I'm very excited to walk over there and pick these things. But do not let that excitement um, override your brain. Do not let the, because if you get into mushroom hunting and you like it like I do, you get very excited. You get 
a little rush of adrenaline. You're happy when you see them. But do not let that make you make a bad decision. Do not let that make you pick the wrong one and eat it. Always identify it. Always resort to this book if you have any doubt. And if you have any more doubt, if you've looked in the book and you're like, man, I'm still not sure. This, this don't quite look like the thing. Throw it out. Get rid of it. It's not worth poisoning yourself. So, Okay. Okay, let's see. How do I identify them? We're going on to edible and poisonous. Many, uh, many people become interested in wild mushrooms by the prospect of finding choice edible species. That's, that's this guy. There are many safe edibles in North America, but some poisonous and deadly species as well. Learning to differentiate between them is, of course, essential. We cannot overemphasize the importance of gaining experience before you begin eating wild fung. Yeah, gain, gain experience before you begin eating wild fungi. Join a mushroom club and benefit from the experience of the other collectors. That's what I'm trying to share with you now. Is my experience. I've been doing this for a while, but I have problems wording it correctly to you i have probably I, I get excited and I, I skip over things and i don't explain things thoroughly so i need to do that if i want to be a good teacher to you guys and it's important i don't have many subscribers but the ones i have i give a shit i don't want you getting bad information from me and if i do put out bad information i will be the first to to let you know if i can be at, uh, at all possible and if you guys know more than I do about something and you catch me fucking up, let me know in the comment section. Let me know that I've messed up and I will correct myself. I will research it and correct it, take the video down or do whatever I got to do to make it correct. So back to this. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Okay, and it says, in the appendices, it includes hints on cooking mushrooms. There is also a section on the symptoms of mushroom poisoning. Be sure to read it before you eat any wild mushrooms. So. Now, the rest of it is basically just explaining to you how to use the little, uh, these little thumb, thumbnail things right here see it'll show you that's just like a vague idea so that's a standing mushroom little partial veil deal remnant there your stalk gills that is you know right there is a rosy gumfidious so that's showing you a cross section of the gills how they run run down the stalk the, the immature ones, the little button guys, it shows, you know, good species. So, with that said, we are 18 minutes in. I'm going to stop this video, and I'm going to thank you guys for watching. This is important. It can be boring. It can be hard. Uh, if it, I hope it helps that I've read this to you. I, I know I can... I, I was fucking spacing out while I was doing it. I have a hard time concentrating. But, um, yeah. I'll be back with a video of actually picking these mushrooms next. And then we will identify them using this book. And we will take them home. And I will conduct a spore print. And, uh, yeah. Because, um, I think slowing down and making 20 minute videos instead of two or five minute videos is a better, uh, a better choice when it comes to mushroom identification and just showing you guys the trees here because these are important in mushroom finding. This is a very large oak tree right here. I know certain species will grow around that particular type of tree. So when I'm walking through the woods, I'm looking for those types of trees to, so I can go over there and see that. So that being said, 
thanks for sticking around. I hope this has taught you something. And I'll be getting back to you momentarily with a video on harvesting these mushrooms and what we're going to do after that. So until then, peace out.